Right, I'll just try to Perfect. <laughs> Hello, Helen. I'm so glad to get to meet you face to face. Lovely to meet you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, Zoom has been such a blessing the last two years, and then I've gotten to meet way more artists than I've ever imagined that I would without, right? Oh, yeah, I agree. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So thank you so much for saying yes to coming on with me. We're going to be featuring your um, your art and your style this evening in uh, California this evening. But for you, it's already almost evening. So I really appreciate um, the ability to make this happen so that people can get a little get to know you a little bit. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Where are you zooming in from and uh, give, give us a little background. So I'm in Devon, which is the southwest coast in England. Um, so I've been journaling for years and years, but started sharing it online, I guess, be about six or seven years ago now, and just started sharing photos on Instagram and Pinterest and just everything's grown naturally from there. It's just a hobby, but now it's grown and grown into lots more happily. <laughs> That's awesome. So you've published two books, is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Which, how was that? How was that? Was that just like a, a crazy process? Or like, tell me a little bit about um, how that, well, that's a, that's a hard question, I'm sure. But how do I narrow that down in a good question? Um, did you find that that affected your creative process as you were, as you were producing for the book? I think it makes you stop and think a lot. I mean, what I wanted from both of those books was something that I would have wanted a few years previously. So that's what I kept trying to think back to is when I was first starting out, what did I want to know? What would have helped me on that journey? So it was, it definitely made me stop and think a lot more about what I'm sharing and what I'm doing in my own journals. Why am I doing them? Because it comes a lot of it quite intuitively to me, the way I journal but trying to encourage and help other people that were just earlier on in the journey, have just really made me stop and think. And that second book, I did most of that during the first lockdown period. So it was like quite a crazy time. In a way, I was really grateful because I didn't have time to be checking in on the news all of the time and becoming really too panicky about it because I had this deadline that I really, really wanted to meet. So right. I was able to just immerse myself in the second book particularly and just say, focus on what, what sort of journaling brings me the most joy and how can I try and translate that through a book? Because I think it's easier often on camera when you're filming things than actually trying to think of how you describe it and what to photograph and include. Yeah, beautiful. Oh, I'm excited. Now I need to order the second book. I think I only have the first one. <laughs> That's but my I've second written, book. So that's the one I did during lockdown. Which one? That one is the second book. Oh, this is yeah. the second book. Oh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> You've got this, the new one. <laughs> okay. Because this is this is one that I refer back to quite often. I um I keep a, a journal, not necessarily a bullet journal, but like a handmade. I call it my daily creative practice journal. And so this is just set chock full, like packed full of great inspiration for that. Um, I absolutely adore it and, re and refer to it often. Um, so yeah, I can totally see how that, I, I love the name journal with purpose. Tell me a little bit about, about that. So I think when I first started sharing online, I think I was just under my own name for the first however many months. But when one of the things I kept getting asked about all the time is how do, how do I always find something to write about? What do I want to write about? Because I include a lot of written work in my journals. And how do I keep doing it as a day on a daily basis? And for me, I just kept thinking, well, you need to go back and think, what's the purpose of your journal? What do you want it to bring to you? And that was why I picked the name Journal with Purpose. All of our purpose might be different. Some people just want to use lots of colour and texture. And I have days where that's all I want to do. Other days I want to do lots and lots of writing. Usually it's a combination of both. And I think that's when it becomes a real joy when you found what the purpose is for your journal. Is it to express your voice? Is it to document just special moments? Is it just somewhere to be creatively free? And so for me, that was always the come back to what's the purpose? What do you want to get out of the time you spend with your journal? Absolutely. Now I see just a lovely array of supplies behind you. 
<laughs> rule worthy. Like I'm just <laughs> wanting to crawl through the camera and go explore. What is, if you could narrow it down, I know this is a really difficult question, but if you could narrow it down to like one or two supplies that you just could not live without in your practice, what would that be? A uh, black brush pen. And my favorite one is the Tombow Fudunosuke brush pen with a firm nib, because um, I love brush lettering. And that's the one I use time and time. That's the very one. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I was just using it this morning. I love it. I love the size of it. I think it's brilliant if you're just starting out. It's just absolutely fantastic. Um, and my other supply would be watercolour. I love watercolour. If I'm going to add anything to my pages, it's rare that it doesn't have watercolour on it somewhere. It's my most relaxing kind of medium to use. Awesome. Now, the types of journals that you use, they look like dot, like some sort of a dot grid background on, and maybe that's just in the, in the printing of the book, but your watercolor, you use it on anything, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. I, I use a combination of dotted journals, some which are quite thin paper, some which are really thick, almost like card, more like a, I guess, traditional art journal. Um, I do quite a lot of junk journaling, so then I'll usually add a coat of gesso before adding my watercolour on top. Um, I also like um, working in a traveller's notebook, so the really thin journals as well. So I've usually got about five or six different journals on the go that I'm using for different things, depending on kind of what mood I'm in and how much space I want in those journals. I love that. I'm the same way. Like I could not narrow it down to just one. It, you know, if I've only got 15 minutes. I'm going to grab like a little bitty junk journal and just do a little something. Or if I need the expansive page, I like, you know, to have those options. So I love that. I love that. You're not alone. We're not alone. We're all and having as many as possible having stacks of them going at any given time. Oh, lovely. Um, how can people find you online as far as do you, are you teaching online at all or? Yes, yeah, so I've got classes on Skillshare. So I'm Helen Colbrook on there. Um, and my blog is journalwithpurpose.co.uk and on there you'll find links to all of my online classes. And I'm on Instagram as Journal With Purpose. I really should. Because I use, I would enter different platforms at different points. I feel like my name's different on different places, but it's either Journal with Purpose or Helen Colebrook. They're both that's so it's yeah. I think I'm Helen Colebrook on YouTube. <laughs> Beautiful. Who um so usually I ask that question at the end and I'm like, wait, I'm not done with her yet. <laughs> yeah, so can I have a couple more questions. Um, who in our contemporary, like you know, Instagram art journaling world inspires you? Um, so I've got a, a few that I follow for, for, I've been following for ages, Peggy Dean at the Pigeon Letters. I absolutely love her. She makes everything really accessible. Um, in fact, I think I got one of her doodling books really early on when I was first starting to bring creativity into my own journals. So I followed Peggy Dean for the longest time. And I also like um, Elisa Burke for her art, for her florals, her murals, all that sort of stuff. She, I think she's absolutely fantastic too. So yeah, they're two I always look out for on Instagram. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I, I am not sure. I'm from, maybe I am familiar with Peggy Dean, but uh, definitely Elisa Burke because I've followed her for years and adore her work as well. Yeah. Well, Peggy Dean's just released on one of the teachers for actually as a free creative retreat starting 24th of February I think oh, and nice. it's nine days of free workshops from oh, everything wow. from journaling sketching art art journaling procreate so iPad stuff calligraphy fiber arts I believe all wow. sorts on there and she's hosting that so on my Instagram I think if you scroll back about four or five posts I've actually put some uh, posts with the details on for that oh, so uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll, definitely, we'll definitely check that out for sure um, and then my one more question is, do you ever get stuck or do you ever feel like you just lack inspiration or you're blocked? And then if so, maybe not, but if so, how do you kind of work yourself through that? Um, so yeah, definitely. I think it's quite natural to get to points where you just feel like you don't know what direction you want to go in next and you're not 
what you were doing previously perhaps wasn't sitting right. But one of the things I'm doing at the moment is I made a journal completely out of packaging. I did it as a YouTube video. So it was an Amazon box, Amazon brown paper. And I've just turned that into a journal that it doesn't matter if I wreck it. That was my view. All of that stuff was going to get thrown out. So it's the case for, so I've set myself a creative challenge this month of doing um, uh, some bo something botanical every single day. So that could be doodling, line drawing, collage, embroidery, absolutely anything. And it's all gonna go into this journal and I don't mind if at the end of it, I throw it away. So that's kind of how I get out of it is give myself something that I perceive is it's, it's not special. Though I think probably by the end of it will be one of my favorite things because I've approached it with a completely free attitude, but so and just working on different paper so because it's packaging paper everything seeps through it immediately so I've had to think about how I coat it or do I create it on something else and then collage it on top so it's made me think completely differently because I'm usually quite careful about what paper I use so it's going to hold up the best whereas this is the worst paper yeah. so I've had to think so differently it's yeah. really helped kind of free me up and think right how can I get around that what what do I need to dig out of my supplies I haven't used in ages and that's yeah. really helped me just doing something that I'm prepared to throw away for 30 days has really helped. <laughs> oh, that is amazing I love that answer so much because it encompasses so much of like lose the preciousness we're just playing we're trying we're we're looking at this with playful curiosity um, it doesn't matter. It could end up in the rubbish anyway. It's fine. And it just, boy, that is amazing. I love that so much. <laughs> it's been really fun to work on. I think like February can be, I, I think it can be February can be quite a tough month, actually. It's all yeah. like gray here, certainly. Yeah. It's just raining continually. And you just think, oh, I just need something to lift my spirits and be playful before, whilst I'm waiting for that sun to finally come out, I need something playful in the house that's going to make me feel good. And yeah, that's been my project for, for this month so far. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I can't wait to dig in tonight. We're going to be looking at your, um, your Instagram feed and we will definitely tag you in what we make. I wish you could be there with us live, but uh, I the okay. second best. I'm so glad that I got to chat with you a little bit this morning thank you, or evening for you, early evening for you. <laughs> thank you so much for hopping on and thank you so much for sharing all the inspiration that you do. You are you're making a huge difference out there. Thank you so much. Oh, that's so lovely of you. Thank you. Thank you for involving me and inviting me. I'm absolutely honored. I've looked at what you've been doing and it's just wonderful. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome.